Hi, my name is Sarah Jones and I'm an artist. I'm here in Missoula at the Gallery of Visual Arts at the University of Montana to talk to you about my work that is exhibited here. The title of the work is Wither the Garden. There are three consistent themes in my work. Botanical imagery, what is hard to see, and the chronicling of loss. My increasing awareness of climate change and the resulting grief is the motivating force behind my current work. Specifically, this work addresses botanical species loss. Extinction is hard to see, loss is hard to see, the effects of climate change can be hard to see. How can we come to comprehend this opaque loss and to grieve it? These installations address the loss, memory, grief, and solastasia inherent in living in the Anthropocene. Solastasia is the homesickness that one feels in losing one's home place as it suffers the effects of climate change. This body of work takes the form of an anthology or a florilegium in that it is a collection of botanical imagery. It is also inspired by the classic herbarium sheet an 11 and a half inch by 16 and a half inch rectangle of stiff white paper on which a pressed plant specimen is mounted and archived in an herbarium for scientific inquiry. Institutional herbariums of this sort are often housed in botanical gardens, arboretums, natural history museums, and universities. These herbaria contain millions of plant specimens some specimens are up to 600 years old. I am interested in how an herbarium sheet is a record of plant information as well as of human information, revealing cultural hierarchies, biases, and beliefs. It is also about the relationship between the human and the non-human. This installation, Ghost Meadow, consists of 18 floor-to-ceiling screen banners embroidered with the images of Northwest native plants. This is a spectral meadow, reflecting the loss of landscape and specifically the loss of plant species due to climate change. It is intended to evoke the pastoral and the nostalgic and to suggest absence. The following concepts inform this body of work. Botanizing the Anthropocene. This is a play on the Walter Benjamin 19th century idea of botanizing the asphalt, which prescribed the close observation of one's daily experience as a creative endeavor. What would it look like to botanize the Anthropocene? What is revealed in the intimacy of looking closely at death and dying, at extinction? How can we encourage contemplation of what we have inherited and of what we stand to lose? Sewing in the dark and sewing is spelled S-O-W and S-E-W. This is a metaphor for how darkness is a necessary component of creativity, both for humans and for plants. Wither the garden, and wither is spelled W-H-I-T-H-E-R or W-I-T-H-E-R. And this phrase comes from an essay by Vita Sackville West about gardening during wartime it speaks to the struggle of maintaining hope in the darkness. The words wither and wither address both the idea of loss and of deterioration. Memento mori, the botanical in art, particularly in the genre of still life, serves traditionally as a memento mori, which is a reflection on mortality, human and non-human. We are going to die and libraries of loss, or archives of absence. With climate change, the herbaria, plant archives of the world, are becoming reliquaries of the Anthropocene, bearing the relics of lost plants, becoming objects of mourning and devotion. My work is elegiac. It is for the dead and for the dying. It is a lament. I am interested in the presence of absence, the things that are barely there, the traceries of what's left behind, so that the residues become a chronicle of what is lost. My materials are ephemeral. They include fibers, papers, fabric scraps, old linens, and the bodies of plants. 
I am drawn to fragments of stained and tattered fabrics, especially hand-worked ones that are white on white. These speak of the intimate lives of women that tend to disappear. I think of Emily Dickinson, who had the wherewithal and the privilege to disappear in order to live and to write. I think of Emily Dickinson's personal herbarium, her bound volume of pressed plants that she collected from her garden. I think of the women of her time who were encouraged to make their own herbaria. This was one of the few sanctioned occupations for women of a certain class, as it was considered to be benign, decorative, uncomplicated, and it reflected the cultural imperative that a woman enact and embody virtue and beauty. I came upon an herbarium from Emily Dickinson's time made by an anonymous or invisible woman. She was a girl when she started collecting, pressing, and arranging plant species in her bound volume. In the beginning, she attended to the presentation of her plant specimens, arranging them ornamentally with great care, and then binding them to the page with linen tape and ribbons. In her elegant handwriting, she transcribed the Latin names of each plant onto the page. As the volume progresses, though, there are signs of change in the woman's life. The arrangement of each page becomes less careful. Eventually, her handwriting rarely appears, and often a pressed plant is simply stowed between the leaves of the volume. I imagine she's married, keeping house, and tending to her children. She keeps on botanizing, but just barely. And then the herbarium ends, abruptly, a small bouquet of white roses and the Lord's Prayer written in someone else's hand are slipped between the few of the last leaves of the volume, perhaps faithfully included here by her daughter. I imagine that these are relics of the anonymous woman's passing, artifacts from her funeral even, artifacts of her life. An herbarium is a botanical relic of a life lived, it is a sublime archive of a presence made absent, or of an absence made presence. This is my version of an herbarium. This is a botanical narrative that follows my practice of making. It includes historical, botanical, embroidered, printed, drawn, erased, ponced, sewn, and sewn components.